Kia ora guys, welcome back to the Black Jersey, it's your boy Max, I'm the host of the channel. I'm in a bit of a weird background right now because I'm in Taranaki rather than Hawke's Bay because my parents, whom my wife and I live with, have the virus. So we're with the in-laws until we're back at university. Today's video is going to be on an all-time All Blacks 15. For those who follow the Black Jersey over on Instagram, you'll have noticed that I recently had a few polls determining who the greatest 15 ever was for each position and um, I'm not exactly the most satisfied with who my followers voted for so as we go throughout this video I'm going to tell you who I think the greatest for each position is and compare it to who the people voted for so you can see how the democratic process works. I outlined 8 nominees for each jersey over on the official website for the black jersey before we started the countdown on who was going to win each jersey. So the number um, 16 through to 23. Um, I'm going to tell you those guys first. So I'm going to start off with uh, the reserve hooker, Sean Fitzpatrick. He was the first All Black to reach 90 tests and he also captained the All Blacks 50 times. My uh, number 17, Tony Woodcock, you could not look past a 100 test veteran who had quite a knack for scoring tries every now and again either. Number 18, Ken Gray. He was one of the uh, stalwarts of the 60s and 70s. He had a very, very successful career and he played almost like he was a loose forward even though he was a tight head prop. My number 19 has got to be Ian Jones. Um, my dogs are big, big fans of Ian Jones as you can probably hear because um, Ian Jones was just a talisman of that line out. He was reliable at ruck time and boy he could tackle back in his day. My number 20 I wanted to select Ian Kirkpatrick because not only was he an amateur rugby player with a really good way of running with the ball in hand, he tackled hard and he had a real illustrious career where everyone came down to see him at the grounds back in the 70s. We now have Sid Going as my number 21. Sid Going's passing was unbelievably fast and my nana never thought that anyone would pass as fast as him until she saw Aaron Smith. My number 22, I wanted to go for a fullback who can kick goals because my number 10 will be playing the full 80. My number 22 was Don Clark. All of the kids wanted to be like Don Clark back in the day. He was a humongous fullback that made huge hits as well. He was 6 to 100 kgs and his boot could kick from a very long way away. Now my number 23, Tana Umanga. I wanted Tana Umanga to cover the centre and the wing. He played over 70 tests. He was so, so quick and he was a real inspirational captain who led us in the early stages of the professional era. Now guys, you're going to see um, the starting 15 in comparison to mine as we go through. My number one is another amateur player, Wilson Winneray. Wilson Winneray was the longest serving ever All Black captain up until 2014 when Richie McCaw finally surpassed his record. Wilson Winneray really loved to score and he first became the All Blacks captain aged 23. He was a very, very successful loose head prop and his only two tries ever in a black jersey were scored in his first match as captain. My number two, I was never going to select anybody apart from Kevin Mialamu. I've got Fitzpatrick on the bench. I gotta have Mialamu starting. Mialamu was just so rock solid at the liner and tackling. Boy could run the ball hard too. And Fitzpatrick would provide some brilliant impact for Mialamu off the bench. Mialamu, of course, played over 130 tests, so he is the seconds to most capped ever All Black. He played his last test at 36 years old in the World Cup final of 2015. My number three is going to be Olo Brown, a really, really fun to watch prop from the 90s. Had a bit of a uh, grit about him, and he really just had no <laughs> time to waste when it came to the scrums. My number four, I've had to go with Colin Meads, who was the first All Black to ever reach 50 tests. He was a uh, very hard nosed, a very tough bugger, as they say here in New Zealand. And uh, the mentality he brought to the All Blacks really epitomised the jersey to me. Sam Whitelock is going to be the number five, so I've had to move Meads out of position for that reason. I wanted to go with Whitelock over Italic because he's had a bit more of a consistent career, kind of like how Meads was very consistent as well. As you know, Whitelock is the 
now tied with uh, Mia Lamu for second to most ever caps. Whitelock can run the ball, he can tackle, and his line-out presence means a lot to every team he plays for. My number six is going to be Jerome Kano, because you cannot look past just the pure muscle this guy would bring to a test match. 2015 and 2011 World Cup saw him just absolutely dominate, because not only could he make the turnovers, but he could run hard and he could tackle hard. I think that I would probably die if Jerome Kano tackled me, even though I am not very small myself. Richie McCaw is obviously going to be my number seven. He is going to be the captain, and uh, everyone voted for McCaw in the um, all-time 15 over on Instagram. He got over 600 votes from my followers, so he won the seven jersey in an absolute landslides. Most caps, all black of all time, try-scoring machine tackling machine and most importantly a turnover machine who really just led by example he wasn't much of a talker back when he played but boy could McCaw play you saw in his early days he was helping Jonah Lomu with the try assists you saw he was smashing the biggest blokes in the field he just had raw work ethic that's never going to be matched by any person ever my number eight bit of a controversial one I just had to go with Kieran Reid because um, he played quite a lot of tests as captain 52 I think to be exact and Zinzan Brook um, didn't reach 100 tests so that's why I've gone for Rito. They were very very similar players who could both run very well. The only thing that Brook had compared to him was um, I guess the drop goal. Kieran Reid was also a try scoring machine for a number 8 and he was so so successful as the All Blacks captain as well. The man was just a beast when he was tackling you. He would hurt you very much so. My number 9, I've gone for Graham Bashup, who came into the side immediately after the 1987 World Cup and he led the team from number 9 really well into the professional era. Um, Bashup was such a, such a quick passer too and I think um, that his passing was pretty much unmatched by any player of his era. Um, if Aaron Smith can um, continue to supplants him in terms of form. I think Aaron Smith will succeed him in my team. Aaron Smith just hasn't really had the consistency for me so far, whereas Bashup was just lively every single time he ever played. My number 10, guys, let's face it, you all knew it was going to be Dan Carter. He is now the benchmark for any 10 in my opinion, because not only could he just kick the points and steer the team around as a tactician, but he hit hard and he ran hard. His um, offload game was getting pretty good towards the end of his international career as well. I just loved that DC was always trying to find a way to better himself. My number 11, I have had to miss out King Julian the Goat out of respect for Jonah Lomu because Jonah Lomu was just an absolute <laughs> scorching runner in the 90s and early 2000s. Jonah Lomu was basically the face of professional rugby when it came to be at last and uh, everyone would buy their tickets just to go and see this great man pummel people. Lomu would always look to improve himself as his career went on. He debuted for the All Blacks as a teenager still, and um, he wasn't really the most confident tackler back then, but by the end of his career, he was such a world-class defender, and obviously he also scored 36 tries. Beast. My number 12, Ma'ano, a very similar player to Jonah Lomu in terms of confrontationality, if that's a word. Nomu would um, always tackle you hard. He also had a kicking game for a 12, though, which I think is instrumental. You can't just be a basher as a second five. You also got to have a bit of a kicking game, and Ma'ano had that. I think his kicking game was good enough for him to play at 10 sometimes, and obviously his distribution. No one will ever match him for distribution. A similar player to, um, to Nonu in terms of distribution is Bruce Robertson, my number 13. The reason I've picked him over Conrad Smith is the fact that he was a living highlight reel back in the 70s, and also he could obviously pass really, really well. The guy was just so, so classy, and I think a lot of people might even compare him to a modern Will Jordan. He wouldn't have looked out of place on the wing whatsoever, but the ability to read the game from 13 of him world class man. My number 14, Jeff Wilson. He was the first All Black to ever reach 40 test tries and though Doug Hallett has succeeded Jeff Wilson, I don't think we've ever had such a natural athlete in the All Blacks before. Jeff Wilson was just a bloody speed demon and his hand-eye coordination was amazing because he obviously played cricket for the Black Caps as well. In other words, he was a double All Black. Jeff Wilson just had such a um, <clears throat> 
such a good defensive minds too. Um, he would often shift into fullback at set piece when the All Blacks were defending for the sake of um, getting Christian Cullen out there because Jeff Wilson just knew exactly when was coming where he was just a legend man and of course I can never forget my number 15 the first superstar of New Zealand rugby George Nepier. George Nepier. there is no more uh, footage of him but the fact that he just put the All Blacks on the map is a pretty valuable contribution to this team's great legacy. The guy was well known for running very hard and for having a very good kicking game back in the early 20th century. George Nepia um, obviously would have never got to see the professional era, but I think that had he been around today, he'd be one of the very best players to watch. He was absolutely class and people from back in those days would never stop raving about him for very good reasons. So that's going to be the end of this video for you guys. So yeah, I want to challenge you by naming your all-time 15 in the comments. I want you to go and like the post of the fan voted all-time 15 over on Instagram. If you're ever keen to continue supporting me, please remember to like this video, hit the notification bell after you subscribe so you never miss another video, hit up the official website for the black jersey, and of course, if you can afford it, you can always support me on Patreon as well. Thank you so much for the support, guys. It's much appreciated. Cheers.